1985 EP physics B. Two 10 kilogram boxes are connected by a massless string that passes over a massless frictionless pulley that's shown above. The boxes remain at rest with the one on the right hanging vertically and the one on the left two meters from the bottom of the inclined plane that makes an angle 60 degrees with the horizontal. The coefficient of um, the coefficient of kinetic and static friction. So you have kinetic and static friction. So the coefficient coefficients of kinetic and static frictions um, between the left hand box and the plane. So the first one comes kinetic. The second one is static. Kinetic. You may use G 10 meters per second squared and they give you what sine and cosine of the angle. They use not to let you use calculators on their tests. Um, so what is the tension in the stream? So I'm gonna, for B part, I have to do this anyway. Let me keep it in red. For B part, I have to do this anyways, but I would have to do it on um, this mass. I'm gonna do it on the side anyway, um, but I'm gonna show the forces here. So the force here acting is mg, and the force here is acting tension. Because the objects are in equilibrium, your tension is equal to mg. Because for every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. So anywhere in this um, string or the rope, the tension is going to stay the same. And that is the same as mg. So for their question on A, so for their question on A, what's the tension? So the tension is equal to mg and equals to 100 newtons. I'm going to continue with the forces. Um, so the tension here is T. The tension there is T. There is force of gravity acting on the object because they have the same masses. Um, two forces should probably have the same length when you show them because they usually look at the length of the force to see if you understand that it's the same force. You have the normal force and the friction force. Now, it is static friction because there is no sliding and because um, this object on the right is pushing the object on the left down, then there is static friction. Static friction. So for B, they ask you to find, um, to, to draw all the forces acting on the object on the left. So I would do mg. I have friction static. I have the normal force. And I have tension force. And that's all that's given for the B part. So we did A and B in this page. For C, determine the magnitude of the frictional force acting on the box onto the plane. So again, if I draw the, flux, the forces, it's going to be mg. I have tension. I have tension. Right in tension, just right on the top of it. I have tension. I have the normal force and friction. And they ask you 
the magnitude of the force acting. They don't mention here that it's that static friction, but you know it's static friction because there is no motion. Um, so the forces must be in angle theta is given. So I'm gonna do my um, x and y coordinates for the forces that don't match my x y coordinate. And I'm going to choose my x, y coordinate this way. So this would be my x positive, and this would be my y positive. So this is my y positive, this is my x positive. And this is just the reference for myself when I write my equations. So, oh, and this is angle theta. So this angle theta and this angle theta are the same. Let me explain to you why these two angles are the same. So if I have and I'm going to erase it later. If I have this, and this is theta, let's say this is my mg. Then this angle is 90 minus theta. Then if I have it, a little bit longer this way and then make another perpendicular line so this one is 90 degrees this one is 90 degrees then this one must be equal to theta because this is 90 and 90 minus theta plus theta gives me 90 so that angle that I just highlighted <laughs> is 90 so theta. So this angle right here is theta. So this one becomes mg sine theta and the other one mg cosine theta. So for the equilibrium formulas, there is no acceleration, so the net force is equal, going to be equal to zero. On x, I have t in the positive direction, because I chose positive direction to be this way. So I have positive t, so this is my x. So I have positive t. And I have negative friction, static friction, negative mg sine because they are in the negative direction and equal to zero because there's no acceleration for y i have positive t because i chose that direction to be positive so this direction positive and that direction positive um, so i have positive positive n it's the normal force right positive n And then I have negative mg cosine. Equals to zero. So from this equation, I can write that n is equal to mg cosine. And I will need this in a second because of my friction friction formula is equal to mu times n. So I will need my n for the friction formula. And your um, mu is here static, right? So your mu here is static. So if they ask me to find the friction force in this part, my friction force is equal to mu static friction is given um, 0.3 and it depends only the two surfaces in contact um, and times n and n is equal to mg cosine your mass is 10 kilogram mg and angle is 60 degrees so you have mg cosine of 60 degrees and um, I have
our friction is equal to 30 and cosine of 60 is 1 half gives you the friction is equal to 15 newtons. On the AP exam, you can choose your G to be 9.8 or 10. Um, I usually choose 10 and they don't mark you wrong for choosing um, 10 or 9.8, so it doesn't matter. Now they say um, the string is then cut and the left hand box slides down the incline plane. Determine the amount of mechanical energy that is converted into thermal energy during the slide to the bottom. So the only thermal energy, which is the heat energy, um, in this case, is the energy of friction, right? Um, so you, every time there is friction, energy is converted from one type of energy to another. And in this case, it is to convert it into thermal energy. So your friction energy is the work done by the friction. So if I need to find the work done by the friction, in this case, I need uh, the friction force times the distance. And we just found that the friction force, oh, in this case, it's going to be a different friction force. I cannot use static. I cannot use this was static when it slides it's gonna be kinetic so I need to find the new friction force so in this case it is kinetic friction and the kinetic friction our number is 0.15 so the formula for the friction is mu times n mu is 0.15 and n is mg cosine theta so I have mu but in this case it's kinetic, then I have mg cosine theta, and then I have the distance. So the work done by the friction is equal to mu, 0 0.15, mg, 100, cosine of theta, so cosine 60 degrees, and times by 2 meters. So the work done by the friction is equal to, um, this is one half and this is two, so that becomes a one. So that looks like this one is um, 15 joules becomes heat energy. For the last part, um, this is my height, and the height is equal to 2 sine 60. So for um, this was our D, and this will be our C. So for the last part, um, I have potential energy. minus the work done by the friction because some of the energy is going to be lost I got the friction right here, friction and the rest of whatever is left is going to go to the kinetic energy at the bottom and then you need to find the kinetic energy of the left box when it reaches to the bottom of the plane I'm going to calculate the potential energy. So I'm looking for kinetic energy here because that's what they asked me to find. Determine the kinetic energy at the bottom when the it reaches the ground. Um, I already calculated what my work of friction is equal to. All I need to find is potential energy. So in this case, potential energy is initial is equal to mass of 10 g 10 h is 2 sine 60. So when I start, when the box starts moving, the box has 173.2 joules of energy. So 
So the kinetic energy out at the bottom will be equal to potential energy, which is 173.2 minus the work done by the friction 15. So the kinetic energy is equal to 158.2 joules. Kinetic energy. 